and we are going to dive into the world of patent PT and building an LLM powered solution with enterprise grade memory agents. Now, up next, we're going to hear from an exceptional individual who's been making waves in the world of technology since an early age. At just 18, David Bunitian gained recognition when the mighty TechCrunch gave him a feature. Now, he went on to complete a computer science degree at University College London and pursued a PhD at Princeton University by the age of 20. Mind blown, my goodness. Um, so he's been focusing his research at the renowned Princeton Neuroscience Lab under the mentorship of Professor Sebastian Seung. Now, David's groundbreaking work in mapping the connectome of the mouse brain earned him prestigious accolades, including the Gordon Wu Fellowship and the AWS Machine Learning Research Research Award. As he grappled with challenges in analyzing extensive multimodal data sets, he identified pressing issues in machine learning. This led him to take up the role of founding CEO at ActiveLoop, a company backed by Y Combinator and other prominent Silicon Valley entities. ActiveLoop is pioneering the development of Deep Lake, a vector database tailored to the needs of AI data. Now, today, David will share insights into the creation of Patent PT, an advanced language model solution that revolutionizes patent search and interaction capabilities. His presentation is going to offer you all some practical guidelines on fine tuning and deploying large language models, harnessing enterprise grade memory agents, and utilizing cutting edge technologies such as Active Loop's Deep Lake open source LLM models, Habana, Gaudi, HPU hardware, and Amazon SageMaker's LLM inference APIs. Yes, please. So let's join David as he walks us through the architectural blueprints and the meticulous steps taken to build this quite remarkable solution. Please welcome our grand finale for the day at Yolovision 23, David Bunyati. Thank you. Thank you very much, everyone. Thanks for the introduction. Um, Super happy to be here and sorry for the last minute change on our side. Um, I'm today I'm going to talk about enterprise memory agents. Before getting started, um, maybe just briefly mention what we are up to and then and then happy to deep dive on the on the demo that we have. And also surprise, we are going to launch and release of one of our like most um, exciting features that we um, for the that we have been working for the last few months all together. And first time I'm gonna demo and showcase at this um, um, venue at Yola Vision 2023. Okay, yeah, that's super great. Let's get started. So what we have observed is that the AI data stack is fragmented. Let's say if you're building your own AI solution, it could be if you're training or fine tuning your own large language model or building your own generative AI application, what you have to do, you have to use a metadata storage like Snowflake or Postgres to store the metadata there. You have to use like or S3 or GCS for storing a bunch of images or videos or PDFs or documents, et cetera. And now you have to also deploy a third type of a database, which we call a vector database for storing embeddings. And then every time a data scientist, a developer um, or machine learning engineer need to operate on top of running a pre-processing, running a training or inference, you have to run a query in a metadata so a server, link the images or documents on S3, copy them to the training process, each read back in again, and then run an inference. And then that, at that inference, you have to get the vector search results, bring back and link back to the images or the documents on S3 and fetch this to provide to the application. And this is very time consuming and very operationally heavy. And you also have to think of multiple complexities in terms of deploying three different types of storages for your application. And what ActiveLoop is focused on is providing a unified data storage layer for streaming, like storing the data in one location, including your metadata, including your unstructured and, or complex data sets and vectors as well. And then being able to stream the data very fast to your pre-processing training and inference. And then you might ask, we have so many databases, why do we need another one? So here's what happened. Every In every era of new computation that has been happening, think of the post.com bubble, there's like web went viral. Like there are a lot of developers started using JSON files. And then that's how um, databases like NoSQL databases like MongoDB have been created. In social networks there are like a 10 years ago, you had a lot of analytical information or data that has been created. And what the way to be able to run those queries, you need to create these data warehouses like Snowflake or Redshift or like BigQuery, et cetera. So 
every new computation that is getting emerged is like requires a new data data storage because there's no free lunch. You can't just optimize a data storage that's efficient for all types of computations. And that's what we did here is we look into how deep learning frameworks like PyTorch and TensorFlow are running the computation and thought, what is the best way to store the data for this? And that's how we came up with the <coughs> Deep Lake. Think of it as a data lake for deep learning applications, which has an open source component that lets you to have the layout, the version control that can sit on top of your S3, GCS, through storage, you can store um, it, like your images, you can store the videos, you can store the documents, PDFs, you can um, then have a version control and a data lineage. And most interestingly, you can connect this to your foundational model, both from the production level, but also from your training and fine tuning uh, perspective. So on one side, you can run this in runtime, run a vector search or a vector query that sits on top of your deep lake data sets on your own um, storage. And once the data is collected, use the same data, use the same data sets to go and retrain or fine tune your own large language model. So what Active Loop does is provides a database for AI. Um, it's the key thing is like it's serverless with computer and storage isolation um, that helps you to be more efficiently, seamlessly go through the data. Uh, it's multimodal, so it can store not only embeddings, but also text, audio, images, videos, etc. And it's all in one. You can stream the data, you can query the data, and visualize this for your Gen AI applications. So um, we are super excited to announce this feature that's called Deep Memory that boosts search accuracy by up to 22%. So what happens is that vector search is like, first of all, let's say you have a lot of documents and you want to be able to run a query and get some relevant information. Assume that you have um, all the Amazon um, sex feelings, like the, the reports that they do quarterly, and you want to ask, what is the revenue for the last quarter? The way usually um, you used to do this is you use this like more lexical type of search, which is doing a keyword search um, to find the necessary relevant information and bring back the result. In this graph, what you can see here is this on X axis, you have the recall one, recall three, recall five, recall 10 and um, 100. So for those who don't know what's recall is like, think of this as just the accuracy of um, how many of items do you get correct in your top one, top three, top five results of the search. Like whenever you run a Google search, you get like a first page, right? First page has 10 links. And then how many of those links are correct in, in the beginning? What, what is the probability of this being correct included in, in, in the first page? And then on the y-axis, you have this essentially the probability of it. And as you increase the top K, which is the how many uh, search results do you retrieve, the accuracy increases. So with keyword search, that's what we have been doing past in um, most of our search use cases. And what happened is that because of the um, large language models, the vectors and embeddings became so powerful, they actually took over and started outperforming keyword search that we used to do when we are looking for some specific information in pile of text or pile of documents. And then one thing that we did further is that given you have few queries of examples of here's my query and here's the relevant um, or the relevance, which is the label of the data, we figured out that you can go and boost your search accuracy by up to 22% without changing your own embeddings. So you can bring your open AI embeddings, you can take your own model, generate an embedding from it. You can take clip to generate embeddings. So it doesn't matter. So the embeddings are embeddings. And then you, you can like in search, you, there's like various strategies that you can go and improve your information retrieval, like combining, let's say vector search with lexical search or go and adding a reranker on top that like takes the top 100 and then has some more computationally heavy process to rerun the data to be able to do that. Like another idea is to take the top 100 and give this to um, GPT-4 and ask, okay, what's the best top 10 results? So then we can have this as the correct answer. So you can still go and use any of those toolings available for information retrieval where your very basic and naive vector search gets ch not changed or replaced by deep memory without any external changes. So you can get a boost up to 22% accuracy in terms of getting retrieval. So we're going to release this um, publicly on our site tomorrow. So keep, keep um, looking for that. And this is the first venue we are sharing this 
uh, news that we you can achieve up to 22 percent increase increase in uh, accuracy this is the biggest problem with building retrieval augment generation tests which i'll demo later on our patent pt and furthermore what DeepLake achieves is that it gives you sub-second queries under one-fifth of the cost. So if you come in to, to, to me and say, hey, David, like we got this recommendation engine, we want to deploy this, we need like real-time latency on SEO, et cetera, like I will not recommend you to use DeepLake. And the reason for this, because we heavily use low late, like uh, high latency storage to be able to cut down the cost. But if you're building your own generative AI application and you need a cost efficiency because you're going to scale this to, in, in, in this example, it's 30 million embeddings, but it could be 100 million embeddings or billion embeddings. And you want to make sure that the memory is correctly utilized because most of the time, the database actually money is spent not on the computation that you're running, but the memory that you need to keep in maintain in, like in, in memory um, to be able to run efficiency. So what we did is we have been able to modify this indexing algorithm to um, be, make it way more memory efficient, which in result trade-offs the latency. So we still guarantee you under a second queries, but you don't have like millisecond queries. Though that comes with a big achievement is like now we can offer this at one fifth of the cost compared to other vector databases that are available that are all in memory. So in conclusion, you get up to 22% accuracy improvement with sub-second queries at one-fifth of the cost to be able to connect this to your own foundational models to give them a large memory. And here, think of this the same way as CPU is architected, where um, this is your L1 cache, you have the L2 cache, then you have L3 cache, and then maybe you have your RAM, and then you have your SSD. So the same way now we have this foundational models like GPT-4, Palm 2, Stable Diffusion, et cetera, that have very small contacts and they can run very um, high operations. Then we can, we have longer context models like um, Anthropic um, and here they have larger context size, large language models that they do provide. And then... Um, you have this kind of this middle, middle layer that connects the computation with the memory model itself, then you can have much way more context to be able to build your own generative ap applications, like to be able to not only just go through the data, but also be able to answer questions on the specific data sets. And the way we look into this from actual perspective is that the data lake and vector database and this memory API layer is actually more like a storage problem, like a cost efficiency question versus being able to run the the, um, the cost and the computation that you might have with deploying your own large language models, um, et cetera. So enough talking, let's get into the demo and showcase how this works in production. So for taking a demo example, what we did is like let took um, this um, USPTO data set, which has like up to 20 million patents. And the question is, their system that you want to run queries on top is pretty inefficient. And you want to be able to run questions across the data sets or generate maybe new patents way more efficiently than you used to do before. And um, the way they provide that, you can go and check on their website, is like a very like keyword search. It's like the old, old version of, if not even a Google, like the previous generation of search engines that helps that like it's very very inefficient and unintuitive to go and um, query the data and what we built is this notion of um, enterprise agents that can classify what the user query is giving to you and then use a specific highly specialized agent that that does the specific execution so let me give you an example you have um, a query that says hey i'm looking for the specific uh, title and then you have a specific agent that is hyper-specialized in searching over the titles. It can go and do the search, bring back the relevant results, and then um, let the meta agent to decide if this information is to be given back to the main um, user or you want to do processing and then maybe generate a new title based on this information. But the clear concept here is what we have seen with Baby AGI, AutoGPT, and other like agent systems they are very highly unreliable. And the reason for this is that 
one small like wrong inference of the um, large language model can actually have a butterfly effect. So what you want to do is you want to take this agent idea, which is great, try to constrain them as much as possible and limit the case where it does a very specific job. And then you can also do a quality assurance at the end of the day, if the job was done or not, so that you can reliably respond to the user. So we took um, um, order of um, 20 million patents, which was in some of uh, 350 data after um, processing that and storing that in deep lake data sets. We then collaborated with RCAI on taking their model and fine tuning um, the embedding model for um, patents. So by the way, one thing that you should keep in mind as well, if you take uh, any um, like generic model that has been, been hyper-specialized for this specific data set, like patents, they have a lot of keywords, a lot of very special uh, wordings and also the language that uh, any usual or uh, commonly trained on like data uh, embedding model will actually mob that into wrongly into the embedding space. And we did collaborate with Intel and AWS to train and fine tune this model, both for the embedding generation, also the LLM synthesization to really boost the improvement for RAG applications. And here's the final result. I'll go through a quick, quick demo here. What we are asking for is like a very generic question. Hey, how does the process of team creation work in ironing, ironing boards? So it identifies without us like specifically saying that, hey, you should use these meta agents for running the vector search across the data and then bring the relevant examples. And then the finally, you have the final layer of LLM synthesizer to give you an answer. Very basic. The data is big. You can run a vector search, get the relevant results, and then bring the answer. So what about if now I want, instead of exactly looking for some question answering, I want to search for specific um, like patent that has been done in this year. So here I say, hey, search for circuits in the year 2007. But now it realizes that this is a, instead of being a question answering, this is a search request to get the patents as a list. And one here as well, additional keyword is specified is 2007. So one way you can take 2007 and then put this into the embedding and hope that somehow the embedding will capture the date across the documents. However, that's not usually the case. So what you want to do is you want to be able to run a metadata search on conditioning saying, okay, give me first of all, all the PDA, like um, the documents that have 2000, that had been built in 2007 and then run a vector search on top. So what Deep Lake enables you is being able to split your query into both vector search and also conditional search, and then condition the filtering output of it to be able to do it. And finally, what you want to do is like, okay, search is okay, but we want to do something more fun. We want to actually generate a patent. And not only just the patent, patent has the specific structure with abstracts and claims. We want to generate both the um, abstract and also the claims for a specific one. But how do you generate a claim is like you usually, like you want to be aware of other claims, but you don't want to copy that. So what you do is like you run a vector search, get all the relevant claims, and then you negate that, say, hey, now generate a new claim that's not similar to this, but has the similar structure going to this. So that then the LLM synthesizer can actually generate one. So yeah, that was a very, very brief demo of what you can do and you can build yourself with um, Active Loop, Deep Lake, and um, as a database for AI. Super excited to be here. Again, apologize for any last minute changes on our side. I'm super happy to answer any questions you might have. Thanks, everyone. Fantastic stuff there from David Bunyatan. Absolutely mind blowing. A world exclusive as well. My goodness, the rest of the world finds out about this tomorrow. Yes, that's what we like to see. Okay, and now Talia, I believe we might be coming up to the end of time. So any questions, you are going to have to contact David directly. He very kindly shared some uh, shared some contact details there. So all of you streaming in online, all of you here, reach out to David and watch the tech papers tomorrow for news of this world for us. Absolutely wonderful. Once more, a huge round of applause, please, for David. That was brilliant. Absolutely Thanks, great stuff. Thank you so much for joining us. Thanks, team.